Woman up. Woman up. Woman up. Woman up. I miss a W to the O to the M A N. The woman up show for empower women. I say space to learn and to dream big. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Woman Up. I feel good. And you know why I feel good? Because everybody has been so supportive of the first episode that we dropped for season two. And it's been so overwhelming, but in a good way. And today's episode is going to be nothing short of amazing. I know that for sure, especially with the speaker or the guest that we have today. Um, you know, for Woman Up this season, we want to focus on mental health and wellness, especially for, for young ladies. And I would have I, I would have said it in the first episode that it's an interesting time in Jamaica right now, in the world, everywhere I feel it. You understand me? And it's it's always important to take care of your mental health and wellness. Uh, today, I have with me Kim Rose amazing 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 lady i'm gonna have her introduce herself uh to us kim how you doing i am excited thank you so much for having me on your show this is such an amazing initiative and i'm so proud of you but just a little bit about me i'd say i'm a plant lover book lover i start with those because those are things that help me to ease my mind but aside from that in the day, I'm a project manager. I'm a wedding planner. I am now into powerlifting, apparently, right? And I'm just so excited. I would describe myself as simply a joyful human being. And my goal is to use my experiences and whatever I learn to help other persons to elevate themselves in whatever capacity. I uh, must also mention I'm starting my master's degree in applied psychology with the goal of using whatever I learn to change and transform workplaces, communities. And so that is me. That is absolutely amazing, Kim. And congratulations on starting your master's, period. Thank you. Love an educated girl over here. Hey, girl team. <laughs> period i really really hope that's good for you um going forward and that you have a very good experience and of course we know a girl like a pass yeah of course <laughs> <It's a good laughs> that. but you know kim i appreciate you coming today because one thing with you you know whenever we say hey kim you're available for this you'll always say yes and i know how their mental health in terms of having those conversations and really talking about it is important to you so I want to start off by asking, how has your like personal experience with mental health shaped your perspective of it overall? All right. So I always give the story um, that I had my first major anxiety attack in second year university. If anybody here go you we you know no say it gets stressful. But I think that anxiety attack was brought on from years of repressing a very traumatic experience I had when I was 18. And I think my body was just saying, girl, it's time, time to deal with it. And so I had my very first major anxiety attack uh, to the point that I had to be brought to the counseling unit at UA. And from there, I started therapy and it had been so helpful. I'd say that my experience with anxiety has helped me to understand myself a lot more and it got me curious about human beings how we behave how we think and how we navigate life based on our experiences so i'd say my experience has allowed me to tune into myself more to be more curious about human beings and also empathy it has allowed me to be a lot more understanding of others regardless of personalities and how people behave just be curious and understanding and use my experience to embolden others to, you know, pursue a life that's, there's better life out there. Whatever it is, there's better. And just remain curious. You said that you, you had your first anxiety attack at 18. Do that's you... second year UA. So at so year, second year... Right. Okay. At second year UA. And when... <laughs> 
we all know how the, the whole university scene is and how stressing it can be at times. When that happened to you, were you scared? Were you, first of all, did you know it was an anxiety attack when it happened? It, it just came out of nowhere. But I think the reason we described it as an anxiety attack, and eventually I was diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder, it was a buildup. So even though it would have appeared to me like it came out of the blue, it really didn't. Because in during my therapy sessions, we were able to uncover the ways in which I was repressing and really hope it just caught up to me. It would have happened at some point. And so I, at the time, was scared. In the moment, I was in a frenzy. I didn't know what was happening. And then processing what happened after the fact, that was another big thing so it was a scary experience very scary i can only imagine and you know we have this conversation i i think it's not talked about a lot um in my space and that is why it's also important to surround yourself with people who understand the importance of these things because a lot of young people, and I say this based on conversations I, I would have with young women, they don't really have the space to talk about it. If they talk about it at home, their mother go around them and say, my friend, so not, not go so. You know, how important is it to have these conversations and for people to understand what exactly mental health is and why it's important to talk about? Right. I think talking in general being able to express ourselves and share experiences it helps us to gain clarity on situations and it also helps to remove stigma when we talk about mental health mental illnesses anything it's like anything with the word mental is stigmatized so by talking about it and especially for the people who are not afraid to be bold i'd say like myself because from the moment I was diagnosed that first experience, I decided I'm going to share with my friends. I'm going to break the stigma from that point and relieve myself of whatever discomfort would have later come with being open about my experience. It's important to have these conversations because in sharing our stories, I believe that we empower other persons. And I've said the word empower and embolden and those kind of words a lot. But by sharing our stories, I think we create the space for others to feel comfortable to share their own stories, to say, okay, um, my experience, somebody is there who can understand it. And it's better to speak up than to sit and bottle it and stay silent. That's what stigma does. It pushes us to coil up in a corner and that's what we don't want so let's speak up on that note as well kim what are some of the cultural factors that you think <laughs> contribute to the stigma that we have our own mental health in jamaica so in my experience having founded think mental health jamaica um and doing speaking engagements going to churches in communities one of the things I realized as Jamaican, we have a culture of resilience and that is an amazing thing. But what that also does is cause us to feel as if we need to be strong all the time. And from that, I, I can also recall I did a visit at a church and one of the things that came up a lot were persons saying, it's as if if I am struggling with any mental, whether it is just regular things that affect our mental health or an actual mental illness, it is said that our faith isn't strong enough. And for me, that's a big concern and a big misconception because mental health challenges can affect anybody. When I say anybody, I mean anybody, any age group, any educational level, it doesn't matter. It can affect anybody. And so when we have that um air about okay if you're struggling it just means you're not strong enough or your faith is not strong enough that's a big concern so i want to encourage us in our resilience to also acknowledge that 
we can struggle too. We can struggle too. And it's okay when we do and when we actually are struggling to seek out additional support. I appreciate you saying that and I agree wholeheartedly. I, I really, this is what I, I wish and hope for. I genuinely wish and hope for a world, but I'll start with a Jamaica where we can just be open and vulnerable about the things that we experience, not just as young girls, because we have a, a very different experience, for example, to, for example, young men. You know, mm -hmm. everybody have different experiences, but at the same time, it's similar. We're, we're all going through the same things. We're all struggling with the same things. And I think having that open dialogue and discussion really helps because something as simple, Kim, when me and my friend, Big Up Tamoy, Big up I, know Tamoy. Gonna, I know she's going to be watching, Tamoy and I do this thing where after work, because we're working girlies now. <laughs> after Congrats, work. welcome. I don't know if it's so, I mean, it's a fact of life. We're going to work. So, I mean, after the, <laughs> no, honestly, mm, that's another conversation for a different set. But <laughs> we meet up after work every Friday and we just sit down and we just talk. I love that. Kim, we, we're going to do one series one day for telling, we'll just show friends. you. It makes a difference, Kim, because we'd be at work for the Friday, you know, and we're stressed out, you know, because, of course, we're the type of people, and I know a lot of people listening, they're the same. We, we love to be good at what we do. And mm -hmm. some of the time, when we're good at what we do, it comes with a, a lot of pressure, and you want things Absolutely. to be, you know, done properly and so on. So when you have that time with your friend to just sit and relax and just talk, it feels so good. It's yeah. like this this big thing off your shoulder just mm, you understand? That's how I feel when I talk to her. So having this discussion right now is even healing me. And I said it in the last episode too. It makes me feel good. It takes some things where they put my chest and in my heart. It take it off. You yes. understand? So if you are listening and you think that mm, it's gonna be too much right now to focus on my mental health, or it's gonna take too much out of me something as simple as starting sitting down with your friends and it's talking mm -hmm. we need to talk and as you mentioned about so much pressure on young ladies <laughs> there is a lot of pressure to be perfect to be perfect women to be perfect professionals to be perfect these perfect that perfect everything and that can be problematic and i think that's that's one of the root of my um, challenges as well. When I had that first anxiety attack, it was linked to perfectionism. And that was something I was actively working on. Where did it come from? Where did this perfectionist tendency come from? I don't think it just evolved out of me. And I think I would attribute it to an extent to our culture and just this expectation society places on young women to be perfect, to look perfect, to behave perfectly when we're in school, perfect grades. And we will have it too, you know, because nothing sweet like an A plus. And telling you to this day, nothing nice like an A. But we again have to be realistic and look at okay, when it comes to the pressure I'm placing on myself, how much of it comes from the society I'm living in? How much of the pressure is really me and how much is from society when we're able to dissect it and that's something i committed to doing in my early 20s because my big man now in my early 20s i committed to living a life that felt true to me and that helped me to remove some of the perfectionist tendencies that i had it served me when it did it serves me very well in many areas, but we have to be honest with ourselves. Yeah. Look here, I'm so happy you brought that up because, oh, <laughs> boy, guys don't know what's tired of me with, with all me, I behave like my stress out. No, but it's the fact that the conversation that we're having, these are things that I sit and I think about every single day. You understand me? But that thing to be perfect, 
it is so hard to get rid of, especially as Jamaicans, you know, especially as Jamaicans, especially as girls. Oh, you know about being, being a Jamaican. Oh, they think it's easy, but it really isn't. <laughs> no. Do you see us out there <laughs> globally? <laughs> no, for real. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm dying. It's for real. Like the pressure, the pressure is getting worse. And and we talk about it when you look at social media and you look at other girlies living their lives, which kudos to them, love that. Um you're forced, in a sense, to sit back and look at what are what are you really doing with their lives? This person just left school with you and them have apartments and everything and you just what's going on you understand and it is so hard sometimes to sit down and say i'm doing my own thing this is my own path it is really hard you understand me but it's something that we have to learn to do and in the last episode i really hope you guys listen to that one first that one we spoke about the importance of just sitting down and reflecting kim so you said the same mm -hmm. thing that you said where you will look at you want to live a life that you want to live in your early 20s right and even in my own experience i realized that a lot of goals for example and things that i want to accomplish but me take a how many of them are yours no 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 them are ever for me kim no and i'm like mm, no 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 get it together okay you see this person accomplished this so you want to do it too but does it align with who you are? Does it align with your heart? Does it align with what you actually want to do? Your purpose you know? as well. Mm -hmm. So it is It is something that you need to sit and genuinely think about. And purpose is one of the things that's going to be coming out a lot in all of this. Because I always say it. You have to work on what is within to be able to, to, mm -hmm. to really be successful in all aspects of your life. In, including your mental well-being. You get Absolutely. me? Absolutely. But it's a it's a whole it's a whole thing. I want to jump on because we, we have some little bit of time before we can finish up here. When you had when you had anxiety in second year, what were some of the coping strategies that you used? And as a matter of fact, when you had it, did you know of any coping strategies at the time and were able to um use them or is something where you learn after the fact? Boy, it's a long time that you know, Ashiba. <laughs> Girl, I've made a dig dog in my memory. Um, but the first um thing I did was to access therapy at the counseling unit. If you go to UA, please, I hope them service still up there. My dear, I recommend, but please access your insurance should cover it with the school. Please access the counseling unit. First thing I did was to go to therapy, and through that, I learned techniques. And so this talk about the benefits of therapy and counseling you learn different techniques whether it's breathing techniques um meditating if it's even for five minutes uh figuring out what you love some of the things that uh, my therapist at the time asked me about were what are some things that you enjoy doing and it's getting back to the root of it and for me that's why i know you see me i'm a look like my love dance Hey, me can't dance, you know, but I am going to dance. Figuring out the things that really bring you some deep, deep joy and pursue them. It could be puzzles, reading, whatever it is. So in my, that first session, we were uncovering what do I really enjoy so that I could get back to the heart of it and reconnect with myself. There were also some very serious questions which should be put forward. But one of the things that I recall and will always stick with me, she said, baby steps, baby steps, and to this day. And I'd say since then, I've acquired a lot of tools over the years, and now my tools might look a little different, but there are some things that have stuck with me, whether it be music, movement, meditation, the, the, the little things change, but those core things have remained the same for me, tapping into those. So, what are so uh, earlier you said that you 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 start doing lifting you start lifting yeah. now which is a, a goal of mine i want to become a lifting girly period so i'm you gonna work do towards it. that <laughs> you can 
do it. I'm not joke. <laughs> Thank okay. you for that motivation. I needed it, but I'm going to try for real. But what I want to know is for the girls listening who genuinely want to try new things or like find out what exactly are their hobbies because they're not really know right now. What what can you tell them to have them start? Because the process might seem a bit overwhelming in even starting. Like wait, there are so many things to do. Where do I actually start? I say explore. Be playful. Explore. And that's how you're going to figure out how what you like. I did not know that. Ask me even five years ago if I'd be lifting weights at this point. I would have tell you you're lying. That is a lie. But this all came from exploring, um, finding people who are inspiring, who inspired me to get into powerlifting. Big up Sammy, Sammy the Pass. And she's a national champion, by the way. I she love is her. I love Sammy. Look here. I will post her as often <laughs> as possible because she was my inspiration. I didn't know I was interested in Paul. I didn't know powerlifting was a thing until I think what I was doing when I um, found her content, you know, year I start and you're doing your goals and all of that. And I was saying, okay, I always say I want to get into the gym and exercise and this, that, that. Find people who inspire you. And I saw something from her and I'm like, that's what I want to try. <laughs> and let me tell you, when I started powerlifting, I started with some baby weights and they were challenging to know I'm lifting over a hundred um, kgs, not kgs, pounds, Let's not kgs. What are they when I'm lifting over a hundred kgs? <laughs> but start somewhere start somewhere explore um do the things that seem childish find a coloring book i don't know maybe you, you uncover that you're an artist from color by numbers who knows the heart of it is to just get curious and that's one of my biggest qualities i'd say i'm curious about all topics and all things and all people i'm just curious and from that you learn different things about yourself I appreciate you sharing that. I want to, so I want to do lifting. I've, I've, I have a friend that sent me um, some, one of Sammy's videos one time. And I was like, okay, girl, all right, period. And there's some yeah. other lifters that I, I've, I've seen too. I know you have Kai. Kai is somebody who I actually met at a power lifting competition. It was so funny how we met. So inspiring, and right? I, I, I love watch like her story alone is so inspiring and kai if you're watching big up yourself because her story is amazing and she's lifting now and it is so inspirational to see motivational to see again that me? community is amazing as well the powerlifting community um and i shared uh in one of my stories recently that this has when it comes to like self-efficacy building your self-efficacy building that there's this thing I want to do and I can do it. Powerlifting has done that for me because with every lift, with every plate that they add to the, the, the bar, I'm like, girl, you're doing this. And I'm so proud of myself. And that translates to other parts of my life where I'm like, okay, if I can do this, what else can I do? Let's go explore. So self-efficacy, building that, find things that challenge you sufficiently and go for it so Aishiba, i'm looking out to see you lifting man i'm waiting and i'll be it's, celebrating you it's the fact that i put it out there so now it's off go on have to. <laughs> but, have to. but i am going to and i'm so inspired even now kim listening to you i wasn't going to do it but i think i'm going to create a a specific instagram page to kind of showcase my progress there i'm going to do it so that is just for me and anybody else who want to see what the process is like because people me i'm not like not name exercise may never like walk too long we can't bother. but i understand the importance of it and so i will be doing it so i kind of want to share that journey as well and yeah and yeah. we talk about I, to mental health too that's i mean that's what we're talking about right yeah let me tell you when i go to especially morning times 
And I have this thing where I will walk with a book. People think it's interesting that I bring a book to the gym. But in the mornings, when it's quiet and peaceful, and you're just going through your sets, and as I'm resting, I'm reading, peace of mind. And I come home, I go through my day knowing that that morning, this morning, I did something amazing for myself. Mental health, exercise, like couple of them, perfect duo. <laughs> Girl, yeah, inspire me even now. Like, is there, I need to go to the gym. I have something to do after this. So, me, me, but me, I go go Monday. Don't worry. I'm actually, I'm going to post. For, for sure, you're almost serious. I have to hold me to this. Yes. I have to post on the 26th of August. I am going mm -hmm. to the gym for my first session and I have a trainer because I know someone can't do it from my own. So I'm investing in a trainer yes. who I, I admire him and how him treat him client them. So I'm going to be trying with him and see how it goes. I'm nervous, but I'm also excited. And one of the things that I, I realized that I might be into as well, Kim, is when I was in high school, I was a part of cadet and they took us to the range one time and we do rifle shooting. We go shoot, you know? And it felt Girl. so good. And I'm like, wait there. Hmm. At the heart of that though, what is it for you? I think, is it doing something new or doing something that you thought was challenging? Something that I didn't see myself doing this and I did it. And that's something amazing. I think that part. So, because right now i don't even think i have any like cool hobbies like i just read my read and that's about it i, I really that don't do any, cool. no reading is cool you know i will not say that it isn't but in terms of getting my body moving and so i don't really do anything so i kind of want to do something that i always looked at it and said i can't do that you know and it's not even doing it in a kim but i can always go do it you know i i took out a one one month membership at a particular gym we got one month, I felt so good. It was amazing. And I never, I never go back. You get what me I said? So it is, I need to remain consistent. And so that is my challenge right now. So yes, it's going to be hard in the gym, but my challenge personally is going to be being consistent and going back, especially on the days when you do not want to go. Mm -hmm. So that is it's going to be schedule. And as you said that, another thing for mental health and any other goals that we have, having a strong support system. Um, they, they, they have uh, this phrase that they call social support. There are different tenets of it, but just in general, think about what your support system is like. Who's holding you accountable? Who's encouraging you? Who's inspiring you? And that has been something for me over the years as a young woman to ensure I have, whether it be friends or my family who are celebrating me, who are encouraging me, me can tell you, you know, my sibling then, Kim, Kim is a bright girl. Growing up, bright, bright girl. I know that I'm doing athletic things. They're like, I didn't have any doubts that you could, that kind of thing. You need people in your life who will support you. And what you mentioned earlier as well about having a trainer, you're going into the gym and you ensure that you get a trainer. Your mental health having a therapist or it's just like going to the doctor for something physical you go to your trainer for for physical fitness have a therapist if you don't have to be in crisis mode to access therapy to access counseling and i'm telling you from experience to this day from time to time i will go to my therapist i've had multiple over the years because you know right fit accessibility all of that but having someone who I can go to, a professional, they're trained to help us navigate certain thoughts and emotions and help us to figure out certain challenges. And a lot of the times, we're the ones who come up with the answers on our own just by them asking us certain questions. And we're like, okay, you know, I never look at it that way. And no, this explains why I did that or you're making connections. And for me, therapy has done that. And then when you combine all of the, the therapy, the exercise, the social support, the everything, it can lead a beautiful, joyful life. Going to still have its challenges, can't run from it, 
but that's why we're building this toolkit so that when we're falling we have it to support us and ensuring that we can support ourselves as well because yeah, we we'll have, we'll have to make sure we're strong and other giddy at No, for real, for real, for real. And I agree. Um, but that 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 support system is also something that we spoke about in the first episode. People you say I'm telling from a long time, forgot watch it, make sure you watch that episode. It is so important. I call it um because I, I heard this from a a creator. I think it's Junior, I think that's his name. He calls it um honest accountability. So mm-hmm. and I, I like I like that phrase. I like, like when you're pouring it because the honest in front I have kind of accountability, but are they honest with you mm-hmm. when you go when you're supposed to be on a diet and you go out with your friend and them say, Oh, you've worked hard this this week, you can eat the ice cream. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you're not doing all the work that you did. Even though I like a treat is nice, let's not get yes. it in balance. But yeah. Mm-hmm. So honest accountability, and you know everybody that's listening, they can go ahead and read up on that and do your own reading and 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 to see what that is like for you. Um, we're 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 coming up on the end, um, Kim, and I have one last question for you. I've been enjoying this conversation so much. And like side note, one of the things I love about this and what we've created at Woman Up, and when we have these discussions, is the fact that I'm able to learn about myself also and learn from everybody that is on here like it's good yeah. over here i feel yeah. good i feel nice <laughs> but the last thing i want to ask you kim how can we genuinely talk to the younger generation about mental health in a supportive and understanding way because we realize that these the younger persons although we're young same way but still the younger the younger persons mm-hmm. coming up it's it's a different world for them weirdly it's very, very different. So, so how can interesting. We, mm-hmm. How can we be there for them in that way? What's coming to me is speaking in their language, literally, whether it be reads or whatever other slangs out there, and figuratively, you know, trying to ensure that we're listening. And I'm saying we as a as a big woman, let me stop age out myself. <laughs> but ensure that we're creating a space where they feel heard and i speak like this because i have younger nieces and nephews and when i'm around them and they have these big emotions and i'm thinking how can i help them to understand what they're experiencing i have to speak their language right so if it's if we're talking about teenagers um young adults in their 20s early 20s how are we going to connect with them? Speak their language from a cultural perspective. Um, just ensuring that we're creating spaces. I talk about creating safe spaces a lot. And that's something I do in my personal life, whether it's with my friends, my family, my coworkers, because it's so important to ensure that persons have a place where they can go that's judgment-free, that they can share what they're experiences, experiencing and have support to navigate it. I really appreciate that, Kim. I appreciate you. You thank know, you. thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for being honest. You know, uh, we really appreciate it. And I'm sure everybody who is listening is appreciating it too. I i'm excited for the episodes that we have to come and i I hope to have you on again kim so see what else we can discuss you understand um because i think that there are a lot of conversations that need to be had as it relates to how do we navigate womanhood especially in a time like this it's such a weird time it's such a weird time but you know we're ready for the challenge at Woman Up and we're going to be having the discussions with that one be hard, easier in between. We're going to be talking about it. So thank you again so much, Kim, for coming. For everybody who is listening, thank you so much for showing up week after week and for supporting us. We really, really do appreciate it. I'm Ashiba Cornwall and I'm signing out. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. Women up, the women up show for you. Women up, yes. women up, as we full of strength. Women up, more confidence. Women up, be independent. You're right. Women up, women up.